Um, and I am one of the uh, three co-organizers of TechSoup Connect uh, Sacramento. Uh, as we've noted already, we have some international uh, rep uh, representation and uh, you know cross-national rep uh, representation uh, for our event today. We're very excited to have uh, Jill Felty, uh, Felty Co. Creative Marketing, uh, join us today to discuss using social media to grow your mission. Uh, so uh, before Jill gets started, just a couple of things. Uh, please make sure that you have your microphones uh, muted. Uh, and you can go ahead and drop questions into uh, the chat that we have uh, as we are uh, presenting this. And I will be uh, moderating uh, the chat. You may see kind of a running commentary. Uh, and. Uh, Jill will take the last 15 minutes or so of, of the presentation to uh, answer those questions. So without further ado, uh, let's give a, uh, a warm welcome to Jill Felty. Take it away, Jill. Hello, hello. Let's make sure I'm not muted. Great. <laughs> it is so great to be here with you all today. Again, my name is Jill Felty, and I'm the co-owner, uh, copywriter, and digital strategist here at Felty Co-Creative Marketing. We are in Roseville, California, so just northeast of Sacramento. Um, for, the, for the for those of you who are all over the world, um, so. Welcome. <laughs> we believe that words are really make or break for organizations. Um, and, and oftentimes organizations don't have a clear message. And so they're wasting thousands of dollars on marketing um, to, to throw posts on social media, to throw emails out there into the world uh, just to see what sticks, to um, throw words up on their website without purpose. And so we help clarify messages um, and ultimately put you in a position um, to make the biggest impact with words. So words are my jam. We'll just say that <laughs> they're super powerful. And I am a story brand certified guide. And so we are trained in, um, in this idea that story, we can use story to market our, our business or our organizations really effectively because it's just naturally how the brain works. We're wired for story. Um, so with that, uh, with that story brand framework, I write unforgettable uh, websites, emails, and social media posts that grow your organization and your audience. So today we're using, uh, we're going to talk about uh, using social media to grow your, grow your mission. So let's go ahead and get started <laughs> with this nice little gif. How many of you nonprofit leaders have felt like this in the last year? Um, I know that you tend to be less resourced. You have, you, you don't necessarily have as much money as uh, for profits, of course, and so it leaves you um, to be scrappy and to figure it out. And you've got all of this energy to to just try things um, and experiment. But after the last year, you're probably feeling a little burnt out. <laughs> At least a lot of my nonprofit clients are telling me. Like, gosh, I am just so done. We've tried so many things. We're just tired. Um, but all that to say, to encourage you, you're on today um, and, and you're still trying it. So way to go. Um, but I, I, what I want to help you do today is really invigorate your spirit and your social media so that you don't feel like this when it comes to your social media or your marketing any longer because you don't deserve this. <laughs> you deserve way more. Um, so let's talk about the last year. I know I don't want to relive 2020 at all, um, but let's consider all of the ways that life has really changed since January of last year. We know the internet usage is way up. I was looking yesterday to try to find some sort of um, concrete data that I could provide you, but really the the data seems to be all over, um, all over the board. Like I read, some was like 30% internet usage is up, 70% internet usage is up, 70% social media usage is up. So it's like. I don't quite know the exact um, data point to kind of back up for you, but all, but we can all agree, internet usage, social media, it's way up from 2019. And the, the fact of the matter is in December, 2019, 
you probably could have gotten away with without having a, any social media presence, probably. And you may have even been able to get away without a website. But today, just over a, a little over a year later, that's impossible. It's just impossible to try to grow an organization or try to grow a business without any digital footprint. Um, and so if you don't, it just is, is, it's as if your organization doesn't exist and we don't want you to risk, like that's a big risk to take to have people assume that you don't exist. So um, as we learn more things, as we go forward in 2021, and we start trying new things and figuring out what our new normal is, even, even now, um, we get to kind of experiment. <laughs> um, we get to figure out how to keep up as things are constantly changing. Um, and they were changing before, but it seems like we have to accelerate, right? So that's why I am really passionate about this subject matter for nonprofits, because you have to use the funds that you have super effectively um, for your whole marketing funnel, for your whole marketing landscape, um, not just for social media. So to, I really believe in creating a sustainable social media presence and it needs to be scalable for our nonprofits. So we're going to talk, we're going to really focus on that today is how can we be scalable and sustainable for nonprofits so that you can be as effective as possible with your donors, with your donor dollars. So um, let's jump in to the nitty gritty of things. Um, I hear questions all the time about social media. Um, and really what it comes down to is there's a lot of, of misconceptions about what social media is and what it's not and what organic social media can get you versus what paid social media can get you. So I really want to set, um, set expectations here uh, because social media is not an end all be all marketing tool for every organization. It's, it just can't be. Um, it fits into a marketing puzzle or your marketing stack in a specific area and serves a specific need. Um, and so let's talk about kind of the different types of media you can get. So that's owned, earned, and paid. First off, owned. These are the things that your organization owns. It, it's, it's the things that you have complete marketing control over. So your website, your blog, your email list, these are the things that you have that you, again, have control over for your organization. So these can, things can get you traffic. It can get you donations. Um, it can get you press um, and, a, and a lot more than... Um, with your own, if you, you can't just do this alone with your own, I guess is what I'm trying to say. You, you have to pair it along with your earned and your paid media. Um, you can't just rely on the things that you own. So that's why it's important to, to talk about where everything fits. Um, so then let's jump into earned. Um, earned social media, Earned is reviews, earned is SEO, or kind of that word of mouth. Um, so again, that would be the things, the, those things that you do that earn you your, uh, your traffic. Um, again, you have to, you can't just earn social media, right? You can't just earn reviews. You have to have an own, some sort of owned presence um, to, to, to optimize that. Now, I've heard some people, some marketers consider social media as owned, um, and it really surprises me because it's not owned. I mean, you earn your social media followers. You, you, you can't export a list of your followers and upload them to your email list. And, and really, you can lose your pages at any time um, because essentially, Facebook kind of owns it. Um, yeah, if you sold your business or if you sold your organization, those pages are technically part of that sale, but you don't really own it. You can lose it at any time. It can be stolen from you. There are lots of things that can happen on social media. So I don't think that social media is owned. I think it really fits under this earned umbrella. And finally, paid. We're not going to spend much time here in paid, um, but just know that this is a piece of your, of your stack. And um, I mean, it's, it's anything from, you know, 
that you would pay for your social advertising influencers, Google ads, uh, search engine um, marketing. So this is your full marketing stack and social media is a tiny piece of it, right? It's, it, it should not be your catch all when it comes, um, when it comes to your marketing. So one more distinction that I'd like to make before we get into the actual scalable, sustainable social media plan um, is, is that social media is supposed to be social. That's what it was built for. That's what it's meant for. And so when, um, when I talk to clients and they're, and they're telling me, you know, oh, our social media isn't getting, isn't getting donations. And we ask all the time. <laughs> That's often that often means that they're trying to measure social media as a direct marketing or a direct sales um, tool when that's not what it's meant for. It's meant for you to grow your brand versus grow your donations or your sales. So direct marketing is as if you're talking to your you know one on one with your consumer, one on one with your donor. Um, with your direct mail campaigns, I worked in direct mail campaigns for years. We sent lots and lots of direct mail campaigns out there. We sent lots of emails. Um, and that's just not the space that social media plays in. Social media is very much about um, measure, measuring the, the feeling, kind of the intangible things um, that, that an organization would get. So the awareness, the engagement, the PR. Um, and even though you can call a person to action on social media, and you should call to action on your social media, it's as if you're doing it through a megaphone. It's not a one-on-one -on -one direct marketing act. So be sure that you're measuring your social media as a brand marketing activity and not a direct marketing activity ever because <laughs> you're not going to like the results. Um, it really is about creating trust, creating uh, and building that long lasting relationship with your audience and your organization or, and, and the, between your audience and your organization. And frankly, when you ask for the sale all the time on social media, um, it, it's it's just not gonna it's not gonna sit well. You're not gonna play within the platform very well. The platform isn't gonna like it. Um, your audience isn't gonna like it. And so you really want to focus on that um, that idea that this is a long term relationship that you're building. And so with that, um, live in this brand mindset on socials and all the platforms are going to re re uh, are going to reward you. All that to say, social media can't live on its own. It can't grow your organization on its own. You really need a holistic strategy because you're constantly moving people into a deeper relationship with you. It's really all about relationship. And so in order to work, you got to you got to move people from the platforms. You have to get them off Facebook and Instagram onto your website and ultimately on your email list so that you can effectively ask for a donation. Um, yes. Well, I said, like I said, you can do that on social media. It's just not going to be as effective as if you were to do it in something like an email newsletter or an email direct uh, direct email campaign. This is the way that digital marketing works. It's the flow, it's this natural flow that we want to, we want people to take that, those steps naturally. We want it to feel naturally. We don't want it to feel forced. Um, and so this is kind of what we want people to do. So with that said, like I said, this is a funnel, but it's also this long-term relationship with your brand. So if you're taking somebody out on a date, you wouldn't ask them to marry you right away early and often, right? <laughs> that just wouldn't happen. It wouldn't feel um, natural. It would feel very forced and very uncomfortable for probably everyone involved. Um, so, so we want to obey rules of relationships just like you would if you were out on a date. Obey those rules of relationship um, to make it feel as natural as possible. So you really want to be able to map out what the ideal funnel would look like for your audience. Um, you know, we want to map out those milestones, uh, so that, that it does feel natural. It doesn't feel forced. It doesn't feel like, like you're asking them to marry you early and often. Um, so this is, is what I've mapped out, what, um, 
a, a relationship or steps that your your audience might take. So they might see your content, uh, go follow you on socials, engage with you in some way on social media, whether that be to go visit your profile or um, comment on something that you posted. Eventually, they're going to get a link to your website, right? Because they're going to land on your page and they're going to want to go find out more because they've engaged with what you've said, they found it interesting, or they've um, they've it's resonated with them in some way. So they'll go to your website. They'll eventually join the email newsletter. They'll eventually open a sales letter or sales email, um, and they'll decide to donate. And ideally, they'll become a re repeat donor. Um, or they're still, they're, they'll, they'll start volunteering with you or um, share their experience with you on socials and eventually become an advocate for your organization. So as you can see, we're not asking a bunch of different times, right? There are very clear milestones for how they've gotten here. And it feels as though it would be very much in their, like the ball's in their court. Um, they're kind of taking what feels like a natural next step, even though we may have engaged that or, or kicked off those things. It, it's these very clear milestones that they feel like they have initiated this relationship. So we're not going from zero to 100. We're not asking them to marry us. We're not asking them for donations right away. We're, we're being very intentional about um, how, they, um, how they relate to us how they find us and how they engage with us. So again, foster these natural steps. We're not jumping too far ahead of time. We are being intentional with our strategy to keep them moving forward and not backward. So then there ultimately has to be a strategy. We can't just map out this uh, funnel and say, this is our funnel and therefore we know that this is happening. Well, it's not going to happen naturally. You have to be able to build a strategy so that you can move them deeper into your funnel. Um, so today we're going to talk just briefly about the strategy because strategy is very much um, reliant on, on who your organization is, what you're doing, what your keywords are, what, what's, your, what's your funnel look like. But, but the important pieces are um, building or creating content through finding out through keyword research. So looking um, at the low hanging fruit, what are people searching for when they search for you? What content can you create around that? What, um, you know, whether that's YouTube videos, um, blog posts, um, you know, the, the bigger content plan. Um, and oftentimes you can you can map out that content through your your keywords on Google. Um, next, understanding your analytics. So again, this is very much um, based off of what your organization is doing or or hasn't done. Um, so your analytics on not just social media, but how are people interacting with your website? So looking at your website as a whole, where where's your traffic coming from? Where is your, um, where are they spending the most time when they land on your website? Are they bouncing right as soon as they get to your homepage? So are they not sticking around very long? Um, so this is a critical piece of your social media strategy. And it doesn't even have very much to do with social media. It really has to do with your, just your overall web presence. And then a social media plan. So again, this is really looking at that funnel that you've created, that you've mapped out for your organization and, and um, developing a long-term strategy for that. So how are you going to push them through that funnel? How, what happens in your calendar year, for example, um, that would help you align with, with other campaigns that you've got running? Or um, when I worked for a national ra radio station, nonprofit radio station, um, we had two pledge drives a year. And so everything was really um, revolved around those two pledge drives and then year end giving. Um, and so what kind of feels um, like you're, you're sending people, what, how do we set up that funnel before those two pledge drives so that that funnel feels natural during those, you know, campaign seasons? Um, again, we're not going to touch too much on this strat, this overall strategy 
session today, we're really going to focus on these tactics side of things um, because ultimately you, you need the strategy to be successful, but the tactics will really help you um, get started. If you want a full strategy for your social media, give me a call. I'm happy to help you develop one um, that's very specific and intentional for your organization. Um, but today, let's go ahead and dive into some of these tactics so that you can move forward uh, with, without your overall social media strategy. Um, it's, it's always important to, to measure that too. So just keep that in mind. Um, all righty. So let's talk about your, um, your, your ultimately your, your tactics. So these tactics that we've, that I've touched on just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, um, a couple of pieces of our social media worksheet that will be available for download at the end of this webinar. Um, so if you have any questions about the worksheet um, or about what I'm talking about, um, feel free to add them to the Q&A because I don't want to leave anybody <laughs> behind as I'm, as I'm talking through uh, the worksheet itself. We'll have pictures um, to keep it in context as well. Um, so let's jump right into making socials work for you. So um, step one of our social media worksheet that I've just referenced is really lumping together all of the content that you would talk about on social media. So content or social media wouldn't exist without some sort of content. As you've heard, as I'm sure you've heard, content is king or queen. Um, so we know that we need it. Um, and, and this is one of the most common questions that I get when it comes to social media is I sit at the computer or I sit on my phone and I don't know what to say when it comes to social media. Um, and so this helps just kind of get you over that hurdle of what do I say? Sit in a room with you or with your entire team or with um, your entire organization, if it's a small organization, and just throw up a list of all of the things that you would want to talk about on socials um, that would be considered on brand. Um, so let's, let's look at this. Last year, this is pulled straight from our social media worksheet. Again, you're going to get this download at the end of the webinar. Um, so last year, I went through um, California State Parks with a webinar, um, and and we talked specifically about about uh, social media for California State Parks. So what would the on-brand categories be for state parks? Okay, it might be events. This is a very short list, but it might be the the parks events, um, cultural education, uh, sustainability within the park, because of course we're caring for the earth. Um, tips and tricks about the park. So, you know, on a busy weekend, where's the best place to park or um, to park your car? Or um, have you ever seen this specific area on this trail? Uh, so things like that when it comes to tips and tricks about the park. Now, three of these can be engagement posts. So when we're talking cultural education, sustainability, or tips and tricks, that's about providing value to your audience. It's not necessarily asking them to come to an event. So therefore, parks events is a clear call to action. So we're going to use that as a call to action versus an engagement post. So this is going to help you identify all of the, the content ideas that you have. Everything that you would want to talk about everything like list and i mean everything that that is like six degrees of separation from what you could talk about on social media um, and then identify whether this specific content category is is this a call to action post is it an engagement post or can we use it as both and so using this um, second column as identifying okay this is going to always be an engagement post versus this is always going to be a call to action post. And then the, the third column um, that says off brand categories. Can everyone see this? I on my screen, it looks really small. I hope everyone can see it. OK, OK, perfect. Thanks, Ryan. Um, 
So on this third category or on this third column, um, which I think is just as important um, as the first two columns is what's off brand, what's off limits, what will you not touch with a 10 foot pole on your social media? Um, and this is really important because when you have a team or when you're bringing someone on um, or just as guide rails for you as you're developing your content, what is not a part of your social media strategy? What's so far out in left field that you don't want to talk about it? And then make a list of that um, because then you know this is what you talk about on social media and this is what you stay away from because X, Y, Z. Um, this is really um, this is really important that we that we focus on um, on just developing those guide rails for for your social media strategy and what you do and do not talk about. All righty, so here is an example of these content categories in action for two nonprofits that I pulled. Um, this the, this first image is Charity Waters Instagram page. Um, so I've labeled them. There's two call to actions, a couple of partnership pictures, a couple of inspiring stories, um, a thank you and a success. So you can, it, with Instagram, it's really visual, right? So you can see how all of these, um, looks like someone's having, slides are not advancing. Are the slides advancing for everybody? Yes. Okay. Kathy, I'm so sorry. Okay. I'm going to keep going here. So, um, we've got, we've got, you can, Instagram is really visual. So you can really see that, um, that all of their different content category buckets are represented here. And maybe they have a lot more and it's just not in this small image that I, that I captured, but this is just an example. And then for California State Parks, I did the same thing. So we've got thank you. We've got wildlife, nature, um, California State history, all sorts of different um, cultural posts. So all sorts of different posts represented here. So these are just very vague captures of, of the content categories that I called. Um, so, so they don't have to be this vague. vague. You can get pretty specific in, uh, in the worksheet. So um, like I said, events or like specific events that you want to talk about more, um, you can get very specific and granular, um, but these are just examples that are, that are fairly broad. Alrighty, second step, second phase is the actual calendar. So of course, this is really, really important, creating the, the calendar, um, because consistency is key when it comes to social media. So um, with the latest algorithm update, and actually with the last few algorithm updates, Facebook and Instagram have gotten really specific about consistency. So whether you or, or not you post seven days or three days, um, it, what matters is that you're doing it consistently. So um, if you post seven days a week, and one week, and then on week two, you post three days, and then on week three, you post one, and then on week four, you're back to those seven days. It's really inconsistent. It's all over the board. And so Facebook's algorithm doesn't know what to do with you. <laughs> and that's not good. We want you to be really consistent. So even if you're just posting three times a week, you're always posting three times a week at the same time um, of day. So same days, same times, um, same number of posts per week. That's the consistency that Facebook and Instagram really want to see when it comes to your um, that your your normal posting routine. Um, they're gonna they're always gonna really favor that consistency. So if I if you hear nothing else <laughs> here, that uh, consistency is really really key. Um, and so that consistency really depends on what's your bandwidth. As a team, what can you do um, to keep that consistent? I, I hear all the time that like, how do you calculate your bandwidth? How do I know how long a post is going to take me? It really just depends on you and, and your organization or your team. Um, but here's a work. Again, this is a part of our, the worksheet. So hopefully you can see all this. So this is a plan that I've created 
for, um, for you to kind of decide what's my bandwidth and then what's my posting plan or what's my posting schedule. So for this organization, um, they've identified three priority platforms. So Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. For Instagram, their schedule is three times a week. So that's going to be, again, same day, same time of day, and same number per week um, of posts. The breakdown of that is of, again, we're going we're gonna to decide on that 80, 20. So 80% is adding value to your audience. Um, so value added post versus a call to action post. You don't want to over, overwhelm them with calls to action. You want to be constantly adding value to your audience. So of the three posts per week, we know that two need to be a value add post and one needs to be a call to action. And so again, that helps you kind of decide what do I say or how do I say it? This, this helps you map that out. Then we're going to get even more granular. So of the value added posts, um, I'm going to pull from that first um, the content categories what specifically content categories I'm going to use. So for this, it was um, two value added posts of a quote, an educational post, tips and tricks, or story brand framework. This is, hint, this is Felty Co's. <laughs> um, so, and then our call to action is one call to action of a lead generator, download, or a schedule, a call. So, it's um, that's direct call to action, and that's a that's a transitional call to action. So it's a call to action to join our email newsletter, essentially. Um, that's the lead generator. So that's really helping you take a I need to post three times a week. What do I say? Down to three times a week. Two is this. One is this. And then those two posts are going to be very specifically called out. And my one post is going to be, I know exactly what that is. It's going to be the same time, same thing, essentially the same thing every time in different words. Um, and so again, we've done that for LinkedIn and for Facebook. Um, and this works because it's really breaking it down so that you never have to worry or wonder, what do I say? right? You're always, um, you always know. So I recommend that again, when you, um, grab this download, you are going to, um, fill this out. You're going to print it out and you're going to put it on your desk or tape it to your screen so that, you know, next week when you're thinking about your social media posts, you know, exactly how you're going to plan them out. All righty. This, uh, this also, I want to, I want to say that this is hugely important for making sure that it's that your social media is scalable and sustainable. Um, when you have a, clan, a, a clear plan like this, it just, it just breaks it down in our brains and it makes it so much more doable. If you just start with a blank slate, it's going to be overwhelming, I promise you. So this will help you know every single week what to say. Alrighty. And then lastly, we're going to talk about distribution. So distribution is everything from actually getting it to the platform. So from your spreadsheet onto the platform, um, understanding what the algorithms are. So it's a big, scary word. I know <laughs> algorithm is, is intimidating for us all, um, but I promise you, you can do it. Um, understanding hashtags, keeping up to date with all of your analytics so that you always know what's working. Um, I want to encourage you that if you don't keep up with your analytics, <laughs> um, it's like throwing money at your computer and not getting it back <laughs> because you're wasting your time and energy on social media if you're, um, if, if, if you're not tracking anything. Um, so in, our, in, in this social media worksheet, you have um, a very simple, it's a little intimidating, but I promise it's very easy um, tracker for your social media so that you can see how you're improving and how your, your, um, your platforms are doing. Keep a finger on the pulse at all times so that you know what's working and what's not so that you're not wasting your time and money on social media that is not working and you don't know why. Um, so with that, again, a picture of our social media planner. Um, so at the top, I've got social media goals. So your number one goal should usually 
I'm going to asterisk that with an always, be engagement. Um, engagement should be your number one, um, tr the, tra the thing that you track the most. And here's why. Um, I think I touched on this earlier, but let me just call it straight out. If you are, are prioritizing engagement above everything else on social media, you will be successful. And, 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 and that's because social media is meant to be social. People want you to, or the platforms want you to encourage engagement with your audience and they want your audience to have that valuable quality um, conversation within their platform because it keeps them on the platform longer. Um, it's true. <laughs> so we really want to focus on the fact that um, we are, 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 are prioritizing engagement. We're focusing on that, um, on, on engagement as our number one call to action or our number one goal. Um, our secondary goals will be kind of determined based off of your organization, what your organization needs. So, um, so make sure you're identifying those goals up at the top with your with your overall strategy. Then in our first category, let's see. You can see my mouse here. Category one or, uh, or column one, you've got your content categories. Again, we're po we're pulling that back from page one. What content categories are you talking about this month on your social media? I encourage you to map out a month of social media at a time, um, at least two weeks if a month is too intimidating. Um, but that way you can keep up with that consistency because again, consistency is so, so important. The second column is the stage in the customer journey. So again, our donor journey um, or volunteer journey or what, however your, uh, your funders kind of support you. Um, so what, again, that's calling back from the funnel. Where is, does this post lie in your funnel? So this helps you understand, um, oh, we've posted a lot at this top level of the funnel. We should, you know, start moving people down or start start posting further down um, information that might be for um, for people who are, are ready to take the next step. Um, so that you're not always posting at that top level of the funnel or not always serving um, the very bottom, the people who are at the very bottom of the funnel or your volunteers. Um, so this helps you spread out um, so that you're constantly and naturally, again, moving people down that funnel. Ready to post and scheduled. So these two um, columns right here are simply for uh, your, your logistics, <laughs> your administration of things. So is the post ready to post? Is it scheduled? Um, and then in our next, uh, this uh, column here is just your, your captions. So we've got caption columns for all sorts of platform or you know platforms one, two, and three. I hid those for right now because I really wanted to show you as much as possible. Um, so what are you gonna say? You know what content category, you know um, what stage they are in the customer journey. You know that you need to, to post consistently and you know um, how many times you're gonna post per week. So that helps you write actually write those captions. So it's breaking it down again, super simply from this slide here, your, your plan and your schedule so that you can make social media doable, sustainable, scalable for your organization. Alrighty, so that's all essentially all the pieces. There are a couple more pages on that social media planner, one of which is a hashtag, um, is a hashtag research planner. There's instructions on how to use it, as well as a, um, uh, and the analytics page that I didn't didn't include on this um, on these slides, but because it's got a lot of information. But again, it comes with instructions on how to use that full planner, and you'll get the link to download it again at the end of this webinar. But um, all of this, I hope it makes it really really easy for you to um, to plan your social media. So with that, I want to talk a little bit about platforms. Um. <laughs> I get the question all the time. Should we be on TikTok? Should we be on TikTok? TikTok's big. Should we be on TikTok? Um, people are really excited about TikTok and it's great, but it's also, I would say, um, a red, <laughs> a red platform. So we're saying that green is go, yellow is wait, and red is 
be really thoughtful and strategic about about your um, your your presence on that platform. So Instagram and Facebook, they're the easiest. They're the lowest hanging fruit. They're really accessible, simple. Um, again, Instagram is very visual. Make sure that you're using Instagram stories throughout the week um, and also going live. Same thing with Facebook. Um, Facebook groups is a, is like a step a step up from just reg your regular Facebook page. And you can really uh, start to engage with your audience more meaningfully within a group. And so, um, you know, you can you can get get further into the yellow. If you feel like you've conquered Facebook, um, start going live or start start a, a group for your donors, or your funders um, so that you can engage with them more meaningfully. And, and Facebook or Instagram will reward you for those things. Um, Twitter is, is, is the next step. It's, it's a little bit more newsworthy. Um, it's very quick witted, smart, engaging. Um, so if you feel like you've conquered Instagram, you've conquered Facebook, you haven't dipped your toe into the water of Twitter. Uh, I encourage you to do so, but only if you have the bandwidth, if you have the, and if you have the bandwidth to be consistent on it, um, and you have a content plan going forward. LinkedIn is a little bit tougher. Um, and, and again, TikTok is even more tough simply because uh, it's going to take a lot of time for you to develop content for TikTok. Um, very interactive, very community driven. It's right now is it's your best bet for going viral if if that's if that's what you want to do. Um, but it's not often what I recommend um, because going viral is not a strategy. Um, and if you if you try to go viral just for the sake of going viral, um, you're losing out on a lot of, of other things that you could be doing for your social media strategy. Um, Kathy, if an organization generates a lot of video content, YouTube is perfect. Um, YouTube is where your video content should live. Um, and so that's a whole different animal. I don't necessarily consider it a social media platform, even though there is a social component of it, um, simply because it, I mean, it's, vi it's very video first and it's kind of a search. It's, it's owned by Google. It's kind of a search engine. Um, and so while I encourage you very much to use YouTube, um, and I'm, I'm wonderful to hear that you're creating lots of video content. Um, my recommendation is is not to post the YouTube link to uh, your Facebook or your Instagram. I would say upload that natively into your platform because Facebook and Instagram doesn't want you to link out of their platform. They want you to um, keep traffic within the platform. So post those videos um, natively within Facebook or Instagram. All righty. <laughs> Content commandments. So this is just really basic what you need to do in order to be successful. So make sure you're writing for your on your audience. Um, know your audience well. If you know how to build a persona um, or if you have personas, awesome. Talk to them as if they were standing right in front of you and keep it really conversational. Um, like I said earlier, don't just ask do solve a problem um, and reiterate the injustice that you're fighting as a nonprofit. That's so important and demonstrate, actually don't just talk about it, demonstrate how you're doing it. Um, diversity is so, so, so incredibly important. So make sure that you're getting lots of different perspectives about your social media presence, not just who's representing on your social media, but how, um, how your audience is, how it's making them feel. So again, analytics is really important there and getting lots of fresh perspectives. Um, again, publish consistently, do not uh, post and ghost. Make sure that you are focusing and prioritizing um, publishing your content consistently on all platforms that you uh, play in and then share strategically. So develop your strategy, use it um, and, and, and be there on social media. Um, because the number one thing that you need to do is, is really nurture your audience. Uh, it really comes down to the fact that your audience wants to hear from you. If they followed you, they want to know more about you. So keep them engaged, keep uh, having conversations with them and building that relationship. Keep your funnel in mind because it, 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 it 
while when you map it out, it feels less uh, organic, but the fact of the matter is it's a strategy. You have to develop a strategy when it comes to marketing. And so keep serving them, um, keep moving them into deeper into relationship with you with valuable one uh, with valuable content that they want to hear about um, and 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 just keep doing what you need to do in order to support your social media strategy as a whole. So all that to say, we talked a lot in the beginning about how you need that full stack. And then we got really granular about implementing your social media. Um, so ultimately, what do we take away from this? What do we need to implement? What do we need to do in order to support our social media? Because like I said, you can't just throw social media out there and hope that it works. There's got to be a strategy involved. And the things that, that really... Um, support socials are going to be your website, number one. So make sure that your website is working and actively converting visitors. So that means if if you drive traffic from social media to your website and your donor can't find the donate button, that's a problem. So make sure that you have everything in place that your website is really easy and simple to use for, for, um, for any user, anybody that lands on your page they know who you are and what you do and how you serve. Um, and so it's it's not a, a hard sell when it comes to actually clicking the donate button. And second, email marketing. So like I said on that slide, that one of the one of the first slides I showed you, we had the two platforms funneling down into your website and then ultimately to your email newsletter. Email new email is is more effective. So like the the average reach for on, on Facebook is like 1.2% of your audience. It's really, really low and it's only going to get lower. And so while you have to have social media in place, um, email is going to be where you reach the most people. So the average email open rate, depending on your industry or, or your, your nonprofit, um, of course, benchmark this to yourself, but it's somewhere between 20% and 30%. Um, so, so where your reach on Facebook might be 1.2%, you have a whole lot more opportunity if you're emailing. And so make sure that you have that your email marketing and your email newsletters in place so that you're not just trying to serve um, on social media and not just trying to scream into a bullhorn and no one's listening because the algorithm just isn't built for that. Um, so make sure that you have your website and your emails in place um, because social, you, can't, you just can't rely on social media um, to be your end-all be-all marketing tool. And finally, uh, your social media strategy. So again, play the long game. Um, do the, th the activities that support a strategy and your organization's goals on social media. So don't just post and ghost. Don't just throw things up on the wall and see what sticks. Do the things that are ultimately supporting your organization um, because you have a purpose, you have um, opportunity, and we just need to capitalize on that and make sure that social media is working for you. So what do we do with all this? One, understand your funnel. Map it out. Get a good idea of, of how people interact with you. Then build your strategy and grow your audience. It sounds really simple and it can be, um, but make sure that we have all of these in place so that you're not just throwing stuff up in the wall and seeing what sticks, that you have intention and a purpose for doing what you're doing because what you're doing is really valuable um, and we want to be able to support that. So like I said, free planner, free <laughs> social media worksheet and planner at felty.co slash SMP social media planner. Um, you'll just go ahead and put your, your name in there um, and download that so that we can send you a quick copy of that social media planner. You can just, it's going to be a Google sheet. So you'll just want to, um, you'll, you'll get a view only version. Just go file, make a copy, and then it'll download in, uh, to your um, for uh, to your to your Google Drive, so that you can start becoming really uh, re really skilled at social media. And I'll take questions now. <laughs> J 
Jill, we had a couple of questions in the Q and A. Awesome. Uh, can you see the Q and A? Yes, I can. Awesome. So let me, so I'm not looking at the corner of my screen here. Which of these types owned, earned, and paid is considered more credible, more credible from the audience perspective? Um, earned is, is really, really credible simply because you've got the, um, you've got the social proof. So you've, so reviews, um, the number of social media followers that you have, people see that and they, they understand that, you know, there's, there's social weight to it. Other people have, um, have, have, have seen this or have experienced it. Um, and so therefore it's trustworthy. So I would say that, that earned is the most credible. Um, but again, if you just have earned and you don't have a website, <laughs> then people aren't going to be able to find you. So your earned media has to be supported by your owned. Okay. Eli, how can we convert social media relationships to other channels where we own the relationship? Great question. Um, Ask them, so within your social media content, you have your 20% of posts that are gonna be call to actions. Um, and so that can be give now, volunteer with us, um, and you send that traffic to a landing page on your website. Um, and so that's gonna be where, they, where, where your landing pages will live. Um, and so that's gonna get them into, ideally it's gonna get them into an email list. Um, and so getting them to land on your website is just half the battle. You really need to get them into your email, uh, email list so that you can connect with them regularly and nurture that relationship. Uh, what tools are available to help map the funnel? Um, <clears throat> excuse me, hold on. I'm going to grab some water. So, um, that while there are tools out there, I think that there's no better tool than your team or um, talking with <clears throat> with donors that that you like your um, your most engaged donors or the people who are already your advocates. Talk with them and talk about the the journey that they took and map out that customer journey or that donor journey um, so that you can can kind of get like a full picture of of your, your, your strongest donors or, or the people who are, your, who you're serving. So you probably have a couple of different audiences. You probably have the people that you're actually serving and the people who are, who are giving to your, your organization. Right. And so those are, those are, are two different messaging techniques that you're going to be able to use on social media. So really you're doubling what a for-profit business uh, can talk about. Right. So, um, so I lost my train of thought with that question. <laughs> so sorry. Oh, answered. Um, what tools are available? So really it's just focusing on talking or talking to your, your advocates, your, your donor advocates, or the people who have, um, who have received your services. If you provide services for your, through your nonprofit to talk with them about what were the steps that they took that allowed them to, to, to become, to, you know, take the next step into relationship with you. Um, so I hope that helps. Explain how to use hashtags in social media tactics. Um, so hashtags on Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn are will help you uh, increase your reach because people are following those hashtags just like they would follow you. Um, and so really it's doing research. It's a lot of keyword research. So what are people Googling about your organization um, or to help understand your organization or what do you talk about a lot? Um, and I explain this in the worksheet and I give, I give instructions within the worksheet um, that, that explain how to, how to do hashtag research, research. But a lot of it is just um, what are the general keywords and um, what kind of, of hashtags would people want to find our content, content on? Um, and so it, it, there's not a science necessarily to it. 
there's lots and lots of resources out there that talk specifically about finding hashtags. Um, but, but really it's, it's, um, looking at your analytics, it's trying some things, looking at your analytics, seeing if it was successful, seeing if it increased your reach by a significant amount. And if it didn't, or if it did, then, you know, so again, analytics is really key in that. Um, please comment on how to address uh, two different audiences at once. For example, I'm trying to address both young adults as well as their parents, very different demographics some value sets, how to deal with this diversity in your audience. Okay, that's a great question. Um, so recently I um, worked with a client who was doing the same thing. They serve teens, but of course teens are not their donors. Their donors are the parents of those teens or the parents within the community. So um, my, my recommendation would, would be to build out two different personas. Um, and so what is your, um, if you were, who is your key target audience within the, the teen um, audience or the younger, young adult audience? Um, come up with a person. So name that person. What do they like? What do they dislike? Um, what do they care about? Um, and talk to them specifically and then build a funnel for them. Then on the other side, do the same exact thing with the, with your adult audience. So, um, if it, how old are they again? What do they like? What do they dislike? Um, what's their occupation? Give again, give them a name. Um, and say, this is who we're talking to when we're talking to this audience and then build a funnel for them. Um, so when you're building out your, your social media, you are essentially building out social media for both of these audiences. So you might within the content categories um, or the um, stage in the relationship uh, column, um, put YA dash um, donor or becomes donor um, so that you know that you're speaking directly to the young adult audience in this post and then measure your young adult posts versus your um, your, uh, your 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 adult um, audience and you can do that there are social media tools that will help you separate those posts out so that you can specifically um, so you can specifically look at the effectiveness. I know Buffer does this where you can separate out, you can label posts as, um, as, as you know, your, for your young adult audience and you can label posts for your adult audience and then track the successful or the success of, of those campaigns separately. All righty. Let's give a, a warm thank you to our presenter today, uh, Jill Pelty. You did a great job. Thank you so much for having me. This is a pleasure. Uh, and uh, and hopefully this results in uh, people reaching out to you and uh, asking <laughs> yeah. you some more questions. Yeah, feel free. My email, I'll, I'll put my email in the chat. So feel free to, to, to send me an email um, at any time. I am here to support your success. Um, as an organization, and it's just a pleasure to work with nonprofits who are so passionate about what they do. Uh, thank you so much, and look forward to our uh, next event. Everybody who's here with us uh, today, uh, there will be some more information about that forthcoming. Awesome. Thanks so much, Ryan. Thanks, Elijah. Thank you. Bye, everyone.